choose to go to the moon. Lift off on Apollo 11. The Eagle has landed. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. I'm David Curley at the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum, where we are marking 50 years since the landing of man on the moon. There were 400,000 people who worked on the Apollo project to get that capsule and a lander like this one onto the moon. Most of those people worked for aerospace companies, but there was one consumer products company, they made bras and girdles, that made one of the most iconic parts of the mission. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for Neil Armstrong's first step captivated the world. Most alive at the time can remember exactly where they were. Where were you? I was in Mission Control Houston. What were you thinking? We've got the safety of the whole mission in our hands for six or seven hours with our equipment, and the world is watching. That's because Sonny Ream was part of the team that spent years building the spacesuits the astronauts were wearing. They came in peace for all mankind. And their first full systems test was this moonwalk. While others celebrated, Sonny and his team nervously worried, especially when Buzz Aldrin started jumping around the landing site. When Buzz Aldrin is talking about kangaroo hops and starts hopping around the moon, yeah. what are you thinking? I'm thinking, Make that silly bastard get back in the limb. We've already, we're successful. We can declare success. We can declare it right now, but they're not inside. We've done everything we wanted to do. I don't care how many craters Buzz wants to look at. Get him back inside. They were unlikely constructors of the pressure suit that would protect astronauts on the moon. The company, ILC, was part of Playtex. Yes, try on a new Playtex at your favorite store. This is a company that basically was making women's yeah. undergarments. Yeah, they're making girdles and bras and, and industrial gloves. Expandable fabrics, things that could give a little bit. Stretch in one direction and not the other. And their background for the basic fabric of a spacesuit was there in Playtex. They had the technology. In an effort to try and secure federal contracts, a couple of the engineers on the team, enthused about space, decided to make a play for the contract to build the spacesuits. They even produced a film of their suit in action. We made a suit and sent a video to NASA of the suit walking. When they saw that, they go, I don't know who did this, but this is what we, this is the suit we want. 21 layers, meticulously sewn together, they even helped create fabrics, the outside layer, Teflon, and a type of glass to protect from micrometeorites. Even the overboots, which left those footprints on the moon, were their design. By golly, that's what you see on all the pictures of those tracks on the moon. And we made that, uh, we selected that and, uh, and uh, never changed it. But during that actual walk, Sonny Ream had trouble calming himself. Head on up the ladder, Buzz. When they said, Get up the ladder, I was like, yeah, get up the ladder. You were nervous all the time that they were out there. I was just uh, delighted to see them finish, let's put it that way. <laughs> the spacesuit and backpack that was our all spacecraft out on the lunar surface. We'd like to give a special thanks to all those Americans who built those spacecraft. It was my life achievement. I mean, I had spent my whole working career trying to do it. 50 years, 50 years later, what do you think back now? I think it was a uh, great accomplishment by some people from a consumer products company that wouldn't say no. They had a goal and they were insistent on doing it and they did it. Sonny Ream, one of those who made the walk on the moon possible. More on 50 years after the landing on the moon coming up on ABC News Live. I'm David Curley.